Hi, and welcome to Chemistry 3006. Uh, here we're going to just write down the expression for alkalinity in the H2O CO2 NaOH system. Why do that? Um, H2O CO2 is the important system we're interested in, of course, the bicarbonate system, carbonic, open carbonate system. And you might want to titrate it. So you do that by adding NOH. So here's the alkalinity for that system. It's just a net base. So here's one net base. This counts as two bases because it's got two hydrogens, so we multiply it two times the carbonate. This OH, of course, is a single base. We subtract the H plus from there and we get the sodium plus concentration by charge balance. You will recognize this from the other slide. So actually, we can uh, express that previous expression like this, and uh, we get a very complex, well, uh, okay expression, equilibrium expression for the alkalinity. It's not too tricky to derive that, just tedious. And uh, when HCO3 dominates, um, that's this first term, we can neglect most of these con other con species over here. We can neglect all of this crap. So we can just take the first term. So in this case, the alkalinity is expressed by this very nice expression when HCO3 dominates. So what we, can we say? about that. Um, first of all, this is really only for the NaOH system. Uh, when we talk about natural and industrial waters, we do need to take into account other uh, bases, for example, borates, silicates, phosphates, aluminates in the case of uh, acidic, slightly acidic environments. So that's the first thing. This is, this is just a model, uh, and if we have other bases, we need to take that into account. Increasing the pressure of the CO2. If we increase the pressure of the CO2, we get more H2CO3 star, and this will dissociate to produce equal amounts of H plus and CO3 minus. So the net alkalinity is unaffected. It is unaffected. You might think that the alkalinity is proportional to the pressure. See, alkalinity pressure over here looks like they're proportional. Increase the pressure, increase the alkalinity. No, no, no because we, when you increase the pressure you get H2CO3 then that dissociates to H plus and CO3 minus. So for every one of the H2CO3s produced you get a certain amount of HCO3 minus and a compensating amount of H plus. No change in alkalinity. Okay, you can see that as the pressure goes up this H plus will actually compensate that in the denominator if you want to understand how that works. The concentration of the species increases and re-equilibrates without affecting the quantity of H plus required for neutralization. Uh, in other words, you never reach equilibrium. How useful is this alkalinity formula? Well, it's pretty useful. If we, if we measure alkalinity, then uh, after we measure the pH as well, we can get the local pressure of CO2, which is sometimes pretty darn difficult to measure. It's pretty difficult to measure the pressure of a gas when you're you know, three meters underwater in sludge. But if you measure alkalinity and pH, you can get it from this equation. On, on the other hand, if we have a given pH, we can calculate the alkalinity because we know, uh, if we know the external pressure, we can get that. Uh, we can calculate the pH for equilibrium with atmospheric pressure from measurements of alkalinity. So it may be that the system is out of equilibrium because of living organisms. Well, if that's the case, we can calculate what alkalinity should be at equilibrium. This is an equilibrium formula. This is an equilibrium formula. So we can calculate that. Um, provided other weak bases are very insignificant, the alkalinity is coincident with the sodium plus concentration. We can see that from the previous slide, where alkalinity was exactly equal to sodium plus. If there's no other bases, that's not the case. And for natural waters, uh, alkalinity is you know, essentially roughly equal to bicarbonate concentration. It's also a measure of the inorganic carbon. 
So it's a measure of the water fertility. So it's a very, very useful quantity. Don't need to memorize this equation. Uh, but you should be able to derive it. 